If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian's strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit tanklessmadesimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the rightchapter.com right, 99.9 KISW The Rock of Seattle While on her way to the altar on Monday 32 year old bride to be Amber Young was arrested for reportedly causing a three car crash in Arizona Authorities say they detained Young, who was dressed in her floor-length white gown, on suspicion of driving what? under the influence. So she was driving in her wedding dress? Yeah, dude. Why? You, wow, you why get is limoed. she not, Or a friend, at least. Yeah. Or hell, get on Lyft. Have that pink mustache take you to your wedding. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I have no problem with her having a couple of beverages before a wedding, of course, but you that's, shouldn't. That's yeah. a tradition. You should get drunk before your wedding. Yeah, well. It, that's what I told myself. Yeah, well, it made, it made me a lot more desirable. If my yeah, I was really into you that night at my wedding. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, the prenuptial crash sent one person to the hospital with minor injuries. Uh, according to the Arizona police, they tweeted out, Don't drive impaired till death do we part doesn't need any help. Oh, oh man. I they're having fun with it. And Young's fiance quickly arrived at the police substation to take his bride to their wedding ceremony. Oh, that is incredible. Oh, man. So he had to pick her up. He did. And then go to their wedding. Wow, I guess they awkward. They must not have had a lot of money. Is all I can think of. Uh, you know, sometimes on a smaller budget. How do because every the bride always gets driven to the ceremony. And you would think at least like you got a hotel. Well, I mean, yeah, you're right. Maybe they didn't have a lot of cash. And I mean, I, I could understand why you want to cut a couple dollars here and there. But maybe maybe one of the things you should stay away from then is getting drunk before your wedding. If yeah. You have to drive. I'm like, trying to be nice. I have no idea if these people were, you know. I mean, I've lived in Arizona. Uh, they're, you know, in the Phoenix area. And you know what? You got some, you got some get after it people that live on the outskirts. That's all I'm going to say. It's like the old west out there, and they're on the outskirts. I'll drink before I go to my own wedding. I'll take my own cell oh, there. Gosh, I'm looking at the picture. There she is in her white wedding gown. Wow. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, that's really. Uh, that's bad. That's hot. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's bad and hot. Wow. I mean, what is that conversation like the whole time you're going to, like, our, uh, if I'm the groom, I'm thinking, am I marrying the right person that she couldn't even get to yeah. the wedding sober? Yeah. Damn. On Friday, a guy on Twitter named... So awesome. Uh, yeah, I know, dude. That's that's. His name is Dan uh, McDade, and uh, he was on Twitter, and he posted an idea. What if the last thing you texted is what goes on your tombstone? And I'm seeing this everywhere. And his tweets started going oh pretty viral uh, with people sharing their last text that would become their embarrassing permanent last words. Some of the ones that people shared are, your president is here. Did you eat my chicken enchiladas? What if I die from floor ice cream toxins? And the accidentally optimistic, I'll be up soon. Man, mine would be really weird then. Yeah. Mine would be, holy yes. This is pure magic. I love it, man. F yes. <laughs> Oh, damn, dude. That's great on a tombstone. I don't know if I want that on my tombstone. That my, my death is magic? Yeah. How about you, Vicky? You got, what's your last text? I'm afraid to, I'm afraid what her last text is. <laughs> it's nope. 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 <laughs> it's well, like the picture of Richard Sherman with the tip. Remember when yeah. someone would, uh, and they wrote just nope, which I thought was such a great meme. Yeah. Well, like my dad, sometimes when he's watching the news or cartoons or whatever, he'll film it on his phone and send it to me. So apparently he was watching the news this morning and there was apparently a shark in Florida. Like that was right by where people were. Oh. And he sent it to me and I don't really know why he sent it to me. And I just pictured, I'm guessing, hey, look how creepy this is. So I just wrote, nope, do not like don't, yeah. don't want the shark. 
I had a I, mine was a bit moji, which I think I would like on my tombstone. That actually be pretty cool because I was I actually was telling my wife, uh, no, oh. not that bit moji. It was me looking badass on a Harley, and, <laughs> and I was trying to tell my wife how badass I was, <laughs> and that was the last thing I said was me on a Harley looking pretty cool, bit moji style. That is fantastic. Can I, you do that? I, I want that. That needs to be your your gravestone. I think because I look really good, bit moji, like with the glasses and the leather. I, I look really actually cooler than I'll ever be, be in real life. What about you, Rev? Uh, this is kind of embarrassing. Uh, then I went home, ate Azels, puked, and passed out. LOL. <laughs> Wait, repeat that, please. That then I so went bad. home, ate Azels, puked, and passed out. LOL. Was that la- yesterday? That was no. That was from Sunday. Uh, That's the last text you sent. Yeah, Sunday? I don't. I don't respond to people. He doesn't. It's unbelievable. He really doesn't. I was I was thinking the same thing you did, Steve. It was like, Sunday was the last time you texted? Yeah. And wait, you ate these L's and you didn't bring any leftovers? There, there were no leftovers. Oh, That's why he puked. So good. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, he had, if he left leftovers, he wouldn't have puked. <laughs> All right, one texter wrong. says, uh, uh, my last text, I'll do what I can to make it, but I don't know what my schedule will be, so we'll have to play it by ear. <laughs> so I love that on your tombstone. That would be perfect. What about you, Danny? Flash sale. Huh? Flash sale. What is that in context? It, context. They're, they're, Alaska's having a flash sale, and I was texting my girlfriend to say, hey, there's a flash sale. And, and yeah, that's, oh, that's hey, all I said. Flash sale. flash sale. By the way, congratulations to Alaska. Voted the number one airline again in the country. Well, it's because of you. Of course. <laughs> yeah, it's not Russell Wilson. It's you. Well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to be the CFO one day, the chief football officer, but I'll let Russell have that title it's for now. It's you and your love of their chocolate nuts. Oh, they're nuts. I mean, well, they're, they're, oh, they're, they're so good in every level of Alaska. They deserve it. I'm looking at some of the comments. One person's... Uh, Sean says, I'm at work. Love you, babe. Oh, yeah, that's where he is. Uh, Cheddar says, There's not gonna, they're, they're not gonna let me in until I get the piss test results. <laughs> I think they already know the results if they're gonna let you in. Good old St. Pete up there. Yeah. Andrea says, It's cause I'm old with a, a shocked emoji. <laughs> well, that's a perfect one to put on your tombstone. And then my favorite is Aaron. He's got the eggplant plus. <laughs> the Vulcan oh, sign. Oh, the live long and prosper, yeah. Equals three sleepy faces. Wow. That's, <laughs> naughty. I have no idea what the hell's going on there. I know what the I know what the the, 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 the shocker is. Is there is the Vulcan? Yeah. Is, is, the, is that ah, a different that's, oh. oh I was thinking this. Oh the shocking? Yeah. That seems what, painful. Eh, I mean it depends on who you are. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I mean that's not the kind of doctor I want to go see. Damn. Oh, I like this one also. This is very simple. It just says, okay, cool. <laughs> That's it. A texture says, my last text was, our bathroom. Why? Oh, man. I think that's what you should put on the tombstone. Why not? Let's have a little bit of fun in life. I'm down with mine. Yeah. I like yours. Oh, I like mine, too. I like this texture. F, dude. I got a flat tire. Not sure I'll make it. I need to find a jack. <laughs> think, yeah. I think it's beyond jack, sir. These are great. You got to go find a Pete by the name of Saint. I like this one. Well, maybe we just need to not buy junk food anymore. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, how would you guys like to be able to pick out your own driver's license picture? Would you care about that rather yes. than the one they give you? I don't know. I like the surprise of what I get. It's always <laughs> never good. Yeah. I gotta look at mine. I haven't even looked at it. Oh, so. mine, mine looks awful. It looks like a weird soccer mom. I was really not in a happy place because my wallet had just gotten stolen. My car broke down. So it's just awful. Yeah, well, let me see. If I don't we, hate mine. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you look it okay. It looks like me. I mean, you can't really polish this turd. It so actually it's looks fine. like Joe Coy. <laughs> All right. It looks, you look even more like Joe Coy, the comedian, in oh that God, driver's yeah. license. It really, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. What I don't understand is why is my picture blurry? <laughs> Well, you were drunk at the time. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. But then you know how to focus at the DMV? Uh, again, this is why people in California are actually uh, endorsing this bill in the California State Senate that would let people pick their own driver's license photo. You'd have to pay an extra fee, but you get to pick. Vicky, um, yours, yours just looks like you. I don't like it, though. They let won't me let see. me pose. Let me see, Vicky. Yeah, don't yeah. let me pose. Where do you, you think you are? Like, I did, like, last time, like, when I was 21. Granted, I was 21. Vicky, you do look like your friend. I look like I'm a soccer mom. <laughs> yeah, well. Well, you really do. You, you look very wholesome. It does not. Uh, this like isn't it. the picture I would pick for you. I mean, so it's it a nice looking like picture. But it, it's like, yeah. yeah, like you're just kind of like not doing anything. Right. Well, my previous picture was awesome because like I managed to tilt my head even though she told me not to. And you look, look like a little babushka cute. in that picture. You, you look very Russian in that picture. Yeah. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I, like I think the, the guy when I went because it was just recently. They even said, "Are you okay with this?" They uh, they probably got to the point where people were just 
annoying them. So they're like, hey, are you okay with this picture? I'm like, whatever. I don't care. It's oh, me. my wife never That's takes awesome. a good picture. She always has oh. her these giant eyes like she's just seen a deer. Or, you know, she looks like the deer in headlines. Uh, and I, and her, her latest one is horrific. And we <laughs> make fun of her all the time. It looks like someone just, it looks like she just got shocked by somebody, like, you know, I with the Vulcan she, thing. I think she might be trying to tell somebody. It's like, help, I'm being held here against my will. Save me oh. from this crazy man. Yeah, whatever. Help, help. She got free. Blinking twice. Yeah, oh, set no. me free. <laughs> All right, well, it's not a bill yet, but it's got a long way to go before it becomes a law. So what, California, you're, just, like, you're going to just grab like a picture of your Instagram and you could use that? Maybe uh, like a passport picture. You go oh, pick your own. I don't know. Man, I could have fun with that. Yeah, that would be awesome. I always debate if I should just do like a really stupid face. I know that you looks mean like, like, I, the, uh, like the one you have in your picture? I know. It looks like I did, but <laughs> like, like really like, uh, and see what they would do. Yeah. Can we put like a fake mustache on you or something? Like a really thick one? That'd be yeah. so awesome. Okay. And a unibrow. Oh, I'm liking this. Why don't I put my Hulk Hogan costume back on? Yeah. Oh, that's a great yeah. idea. With the muscles and everything. Yeah, and that, that, they'll love that picture. <laughs> nice. Yeah, because what they want to do is they want you to look nothing like yourself. That way the cops can't right. identify you for any reason. What does Danny's look like? Let's see. Uh, what let's see. Uh, it just looks like Danny. It looks like Danny. Yeah. Yeah. I had blonde hair at the time, and I had a hat on, and they made me take it off. Yeah, so. they don't let you keep a hat on. Oh, man. Sorry, Danny. It's okay. Rev's head. Yeah. And Rev, uh, Rev just looks like Rev, I bet, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there he is. He looks really excited. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's like the happiest I've ever seen, Rev. Yeah. It's all fake. They so tell you to smile, so I just show my teeth and hope it gets through. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I've got a new survey. Uh, turns out that more than half of millennials say they're currently going through a quarter life crisis. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So, who, okay, your daughter's a millennial, right? Yeah, she is. So is Danny. Yeah. All right. So, Danny and daughter. Joey D's. Joey D's, come on in here, too. All right. A quarter life crisis. Now, midlife crisis, we know what those are all about. Right. That's when you go get a convertible. Yeah. You get some hair plugs. That's what you do. And you drive around. I never heard of a quarter life crisis. Is this a new thing that's just hitting the millennial generation? 25 ish? Uh, is that yeah. what you think? 25, well, between 25 and 30? Yeah. It's got to be because, I mean, I mean, if you're living to 100, which, I mean, a lot more people are, that would be a quarter life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, say 25 I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna live, years old. I'm going to live to 120-something. So, I'm in a quarter life crisis right oh, now. Are you? Are, are, yes. Yeah, you're in a quarter life crisis? Absolutely. The technology is going to keep you going? Yes. Yeah. I, right. I might not be a body, but I will be a brain. Ooh, the Steve brain floating. That's right, in a VR world. Okay. Hey, you know what? Hey, listen, man, that's not too shabby. Well, let's check with your daughter. Is she experiencing a quarter-life crisis right now? Oh, Sarah. Oh, hey. No, not yet. But I definitely think it's going to be coming. Probably a little bit closer to my 30s. I've already <laughs> warned Johnny Rubbers about it. Like, he better try to keep me sane. Because I think I'm probably going to go through one. What's the big fear? I don't, I mean, if I don't know if dad gets canned. What am I going to do? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, where's your think, meal ticket? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. What is she going to do with her life? Yeah. I mean, now that, that, that like, does that feel weird that like, you're, you're worried about if your father doesn't have a job, that means you've lost your job? I mean, it's the truth. Let's get real, yeah. you know? So, I mean, no, it's not weird. I okay. love it, really. But, yeah, I feel like a lot of people my age, especially being a female, I think we go through that whole, like, not what are we doing with our lives, but also, am I going to find a man? Am I going to get married? Like, our clocks are ticking, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you want to have a family, I get it, because, you know, once you get into 30 years old and you don't have kids yet, yet that you got to think, There's like, that pressure. Okay, is that something so I want to do? Or getting, uh, even getting married. Yeah? Yeah. She's got Johnny Rubbers, at so, least. At least I got a man. Yeah, she's so Has he got a job, or does yeah. dad need to give him a job, too? <laughs> He's got a job. Okay. He's got a job. Yeah, Johnny Rubbers has got a good job. He's a hard-working dude. And, nice. You know, the first time I've dated someone like that, yeah. so you know, it's weird. Yeah. in jail. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Usually yeah. we're both like feeding off dad's money, but... Yeah, not Johnny Rubbers, man. He's no, never clearly, asked me for a dime. Clearly, I'm not very good at math. This person said, if you live to 120-something, that's a third-life crisis, not a quarter-life crisis, Steve. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Math! None of us caught you either, so... No, no, clearly I'm not the only idiot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, uh, so, so Sarah, I, I'm wondering about my son who... I don't know what he measures milestones on because uh, he's, he's definitely atypical when it comes to what you'd expect for somebody getting close to 30. Uh, he doesn't seem to be unhappy, I know that, but, I, but he doesn't tell me anything. He could be very unhappy. How would I know? I don't talk to him. No, I have no crisis, man. I, I'm too laid back for that stuff. People freaking out. They want to have kids. They want a house. I'm like, yeah, just relax. 
Yeah, Enjoy you, it while you're young. You don't freak out about anything. No. Nothing. I think I got all of that. So is there no fear of anything coming up in the, like, uh, nothing? No, like, I don't know 30s if it's not me. worrying you at all? No, I, I don't know if it's, like, good friends or, like, having good people around you, but I feel like you can get through everything at that point. You know, if I came to a, you know, if, I don't know, something happened or I like, broke my leg or, you know, my hand got cut off and there was some crisis and I started breaking oh, nice. down. Wait, yeah, so you're worried yeah. about breaking your leg and losing your hand. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Something weird, right? I just feel like... I I would be supported enough to get through it. Yeah, so no fear of dad losing his job. Like no, no, he, he's a talented man. We're right. good. Right. <laughs> yes, 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 right. hey. We're counting buttering, on you, dad. Buttering me up, yeah. <laughs> well, he's not really counting on me. He has no problem with it. Uh, you, on the other hand, you definitely seem like you need me to stay employed. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I hope you kids have learned something that if I'm no longer here, you can do something with your skills. Sarah's saying no, no way. I mean, just don't die. I'm afraid oh, of you dying. I'm going to die someday. I know, and I don't even like thinking about Look that. Look at Joey D's. He's hoping. Look at it. You don't want me to die, and Joey D's is like, <laughs> I'm counting the days. So, so it's just Joe's <laughs> quiet and doesn't tell BJ anything. He's a hitman, I'm pretty sure. That's from Chris. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On to me. Who knows what Joey D's could be doing? He could be working for the FBI, the CIA. I wouldn't know. Right? That'd be yeah. awesome. Can I get my own theme music? Well, I think he just proved that he's not. <laughs> yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> yeah. Damn. And so finally, the last millennial that we have Danny. on the show, Danny V, who, at least if you check off the boxes, Danny's done a lot in his young life. Mm-hmm. Married, divorced with a child. I mean, those are a lot of things that he's done. I mean... He's living the American dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently. I, well, that's what I was going to say. I feel like I went through a quarter-life crisis without meaning to. Because well, I never... I didn't, like, ask for a divorce, but it happened. Like, it just... The divorce happened. I changed... Changed jobs, moved from Albuquerque to Which Seattle. Which was your hometown. Yeah. So you really jumped up and changed your life. Yeah, I, that, that could be crisis-driven, uh, sure. But I didn't ever feel anxious or about it, or like I needed to change my life. It just kind of all happened when I turned, like, 28. So there you go. Are you uh, we're all worried about uh, your dad, a.k.a. BJ, losing his job as well? <laughs> kind of, no. Okay. <laughs> I have to tell you, though, when I was, uh, w- when I was in my mid-20s, I mean, lots of changes were happening because I got married. Mm-hmm. So when I was 25, I, I got married. Then uh, not too long after that, I moved away when my wife was pregnant with Joe. And so that changed everything. So maybe I was going through a quarter-life crisis because I was done with the life I had. Couldn't wait to get with my wife and get rid. And I didn't want to be with my family. I wanted to be on my own and start a whole new life. So I guess maybe I had it too. But see, well, yeah, the way you described that does sound like a crisis. There's a lot of stuff that's going to stress you out and things that are going to be happening. I never understand when people see someone that has like a convertible or like a Corvette and they're like, oh, midlife crisis. What's the crisis? It seems like he's having a pretty good go at things. Yeah, you are right. I mean, he's got enough money to buy it, and he's, he's got a smile on his face. I never understood that either, why that's a midlife crisis. But that, that, that sounds like midlife fun. Yeah. Like, I think more people should strive for that. Do things, take care of yourself, splurge on yourself. I don't understand why we, we poo-poo it like it's a bad thing. Well, according to the like, survey, oh, you bought a boat. You must be going through a midlife crisis. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Maybe because I just like being on the water. Yeah. Maybe I worked really hard to get something I've been saving up for and enjoying in my life. Uh, oh, we have a, yeah. a, a, one, one request by a listener. Joey D's Nuts. He just said, why don't you guys play the Joey D's Nuts soundbite when Joey comes on? He's important too, damn it. I totally forgot about that. Joey yeah, so you, D's nuts. You Thank have you a theme. Joey D's nuts. nuts. <laughs> How about he forgot that he had his own theme? <laughs> Joey D's nuts. Taken after his dad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are important, son. Yeah. Well, Joey D's always said to me whenever we have conversations, he was not worried about anything. I said, what if you, know, what if you get fired from this job? I'll get another one. Nice. I'm like, wow, I wish I had that. So this is what millennials are saying, because half of them are going through this quarter-life crisis. Half of the millennials in this survey. So what are they doing? To, to, what, what constitutes it being a quarter-life crisis? Are they are buying something? They're not like, making enough money. Okay, so they're not buying Corvettes. But let me just tell you this. And I think this is a, a, a real are problem. Are they buying a fidget spinner? A fidget spinner. <laughs> Well, they they spend more than they earn each month, which means they're relying on their parents racking up debt or both. But I think this is reasonable. And I think a lot of folks get down on millennials going, you know what? You shouldn't spend more than you can. But I went and looked at one of my original tax returns when I was in my 20s I went mm-hmm. because I do every year. And I go back and see how much, you know, hey, how much am I making now compared Jeez. to them? I know some people right now are starting, if they're lucky, if they're entry level, they're starting between twenty and thirty thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. I have to tell you something. That was pretty much what I was making entry level back in the eighties. Yeah. 
And yet we know the price for things have gone up in those 30 some odd years. Here in Seattle, it's about the same to live here as it was back in 1998. Oh, sure it was, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I can see why if you're a millennial and you're getting the same entry level that somebody like myself in my 50s got when I started out, that's BS. And mm-hmm. I don't understand that. I don't understand how a person who comes out of college, who's done a really good yeah. job and who's got, who's got a brain in their head, how is it that that's all you're making? The same thing that I would. And by the way, I didn't even graduate college and I was able to pull that down. That's bad for this country if that and I don't know what entry level jobs are now, but I don't think they're much more than 35. I would think that's about what it is, yeah. It's, that's not a big increase. Well, not in this city. Not yeah. in, you can't afford to live in Seattle. And so then what do you do? You got to move out of Seattle and but then all of a sudden you're going broke because the gas prices aren't very cheap. Yeah, dude. What are and, we going to do about this? And and a quarter of them say they can't find a good job. So there's money issues. Mm-hmm. They can't find a good job. Then another quarter of them hate their current job, which was Joey D's problem until he got the job here. And now he really loves life because uh, he's working with his sister and his father. <laughs> he tried to get away from us when he moved out, and he's working with us. But I really yeah, plays on the Internet, gets a couple of hours. Yeah, sure he does. <laughs> and then finally, uh, and Sarah touched on this herself before uh, Johnny well, Rubber's relationship issues. Oh, So yeah. those are the big three things, being broke and in debt, can't find a good job, hating your job, and then can't find... That's why they're having a quarter-life crisis, most of these millennials. Somebody said they read an article where millennials are not saving for retirement because they believe that capitalism will not will not exist when they retire. What? Well, let's think about that. That's about 40 years from now, 40, mm-hmm. you know, maybe 40 to 50 years from now. They really think the capitalism train will be done by then? Or they're just looking for any wow. excuse to spend their money on their new iMac. Yeah. Yeah. Is it iMac wow. or is this Mac? I don't even know. Uh, yeah, no. iMac is working. Yeah, the right. Ma- or MacBook. I Ma- I know it's probably no. It's not. It's I not think an it's iMac. Mac. It's just a Mac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we You're all right. don't yeah. know. Yeah, they gave us. No, oh, sorry. I was gonna say they gave us way too much credit to be like capitalism is going to be done. I don't save because it's so expensive to live in the city and it's hard to put money away every yeah. month. You know what I mean? I don't know about you guys, but when you were younger, was there that was this much stuff to spend money on? <laughs> I feel like you can literally find excuse like an iPad or a video game or a, you know like this, and they're expensive. Impulse purchases yeah. were not as easy to do as they are now. I'll give you that. And you're right. There's a lot more to spend your money I on. I feel like that we had stuff then, too. Like the, the, the boom boxes and, the, you know, there was other stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's always been a gentleman's club. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. well, there is that. Yeah. There's, always, there's always places to spend your money, Joe. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what I would guess. But it's like, you know, you got a $500 iPhone today, and then next year it's the iPhone 2 for $500. Was there like boom box 2 that you came out where you're like, yes, finally, the, boom box 2. Yeah. <laughs> well, much, yeah. Yeah, there was they, the bigger boombox, with an alarm you. system attached to it. <laughs> uh, Joey D's, my my generation, you know, my 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 generation was the first one that had uh, home computing and console gaming. So yes. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. And for, so that's where I was spending all my money on on games. I, you know, and you know how the gaming's consoles work. The consoles really aren't the thing that they get you. That's not the big ticket. It's the you know thirty, forty, fifty, sixty as the price went up for each game you bought for that console. I was that guy. So it, yeah. I, I, I think you're right though. I think it started with that. I think that's what really made the like. Oh my God, what are you young people spending all your money on? I think my father's generation they just drank. They drank a lot of their money away. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, I'm not kidding. And cigarettes, cigarettes and drinking and that kind of stuff I think is what they spent their money on. Huh. Makes sense because I mean my my, my money goes like through. like your phones are like the super expensive phones. When I was a younger I got myself one of those Palm Pilot trios and it was $800. <laughs> oh my God, really? Yeah. yeah. That's and, brutal. And when you think of what you have color on that screen. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Can you imagine we yeah, can you imagine we paid that much money for like a black and white goofy looking screen thing I mean that was nowhere near as good as an iPhone? It looked like a stupid version of a calculator. And yet, we were so happy to get it. I we were know. like, this is amazing. I could put an appointment in here. <laughs> My fat fingers should type on these tiny keys. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I'm getting my wages garnished. Can bankruptcy help with that? Absolutely. Uh, One of the big reasons people file bankruptcy is because they have a judgment or a lawsuit against them or their wages are getting garnished uh, and so they can't pay their other regular ongoing bills. People sometimes think that you can't file bankruptcy once they have a judgment against them or once a garnishment has started, and that's not true. Filing bankruptcy will immediately stop any garnishment that you have going except for child support uh, and 
stop your creditors from continuing on with garnishments of your bank account, your wages, um, and in most cases will discharge that liability uh, through the bankruptcy process. And we can file a bankruptcy case uh, for you usually the day you come in. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. You can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. If your water heater is over 8 years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Count on me. 